we are here at Matsutema Waste Water Treatment Works and uh, one of the issues that we're dealing with here is uh, pollution of our surface water resources. Nationally it's a big problem in terms of treatment of wastewater and in this particular example the CSR is looking at implementing some of the technologies to make sure that we uh, have sustainable water resource use. Montetema Wastewater Treatment Works is one of the examples in the country where the infrastructure was established about 20 or 30 years ago and it's really just no longer suitable to treat, treat the volumes of waste that we're getting nowadays. So our intervention here is to look at technologies that can more efficiently treat the waste, in other words using the same infrastructure actually treating more waste. So we're looking at actually extending the capability of the country's infrastructure in this way. Motetema Wastewater Treatment Works really works with the sequential pond system. There's six sequential ponds here and the uh, ponds two to five is where algae is actually used to treat the water, uh, really consuming uh, the nutrients that's coming in with the effluent. And then the final pond is where the water is what we call being polished, so being prepared for final release into the river system. And really we're trying to treat the water that there isn't um, excess nutrients in the water and also not microbial pollution which can have a detrimental effect for people's health downstream. Wastewater treatment is not really a lucrative business. So we're hoping to use something like algae, which is usually considered a pest, an impact in a natural resource, to treat wastewater. So at Motitema we have two systems of six ponds with which we treat wastewater in a gravitational flow method. That means when the, the effluent comes into the first uh, pond and then it just flows through gravitation through to the other ones. And then uh, pond four and five is where we hope to introduce our algae-based system where they will thrive on the nutrients. And what thrives on algae? Fish or some form of aquaculture, which we're hoping to introduce to the sixth pond, which will prevent this algae from entering our natural resources. Now, our biggest challenge in the lab the story was to isolate algae that can absorb maximum phosphates and this algae will then be used in the saturated ponds. That means ponds such as wastewater treatment plants to extract the phosphates out of the system. Now we isolated two unique species of microalgae and the challenge was to see if this algae can survive under different temperature conditions and at basically no movement in the pond systems. The reason for this is that most of this rural pond system doesn't have electricity so you can't put in mechanical mixing uh, at any of these ponds. In this project in particular we're also working in partnership with the University of Limpopo um, where they're looking at uh, alternative uh, beneficiation of wastewater treatment works and we're also working with the municipality in terms of uh, for instance the beneficiation of uh, sludge removal uh, so there's many different parties involved in finding solutions to this particular issue. I'm from the University of Limpopo and we've been asked to assess what fish species we can put into the sixth pond, which is the polishing pond, which is basically uh, fish that can consume the algae. So in theory, basically the algae which absorbs, picks up the nutrients, is then converted into fish biomass uh, when the fish ingest the algae. We're basically going to try and assess fish work in standard local conditions because of the, the, the situation or the system here is an artificial system, not a natural system. We then have to find fish that are robust enough to can tolerate the conditions or the nutrients within the system. That's why CSR assessment of the water conditions and um, parameters are crucial in, in judging what fish that we can introduce into the system. So in essence, what we're trying to do is once we can successfully rear fish in this condition, we can then involve the various stakeholders to then just decide what they want to do with the fish, i.e. be it aquaculture, or be it for consumption, or be it for just recreational fishing. Because what's really crucial for the successful rearing of fish is the water, good water quality. And if the ammonia levels, for instance, are too high, it becomes toxic to the fish and they in turn will die. I.e. also if the oxygen levels are too low, the fish will also die. So these are the parameters that we have to consider when introducing fish into the system. One of the outcomes of this project is to make sure that the community has ownership of what we do here. This means that it's not just the technology that we're implementing and that we're going away with. The community has to be involved from the very first. And this means that our technology or our in intervention has an impact on their lives here. The sustainability of this project is really important because it will have an impact on the health and the benefits that the community will get out of the project in the long run. This means 
that they need to be part of the project. If that means that they're here when we're sampling or if we're sharing knowledge with them, they have to be part of every step of the way. As part of our stakeholder engagement process with the um, SDM, which is the Greater Sikukuna District Municipality in Motatema, uh, we decided to invite our stakeholders there, which is the representatives from the District Municipality and the local people um, um, coming from the Elias Mutsoledi uh, District Municipality, which is the local level. Um, what we decided to do is that we wanted to invite them to come and observe the science behind the project that we're currently doing with them in Motatema. And um, we gave them a tour around our labs, which was led by Dr. Um, Leroux. And then we also gave them a technical lecture around the project, which was led by Dr. Paul Cheng. Our last stop was at the raceways where our algae is currently being bred and uh, which is also the final stop where after it is ready we take it to the community from there. We hope that the project that the CSIR is assisting us with might assist us to clean that water and then be able to be consumed again by the community and be used by wild animals and the likes because it goes back to the river that is very big that is supplying the area. The privilege for us as SDM is our first district municipality to start this project, special for the community. So that is like, uh, I think it will also decrease the poverty from our communities at the same time.